please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Paul LaViolette. I'm a system scientist and physicist. Um, live in, uh, in New York State and also in Greece part-time. And uh, I've been to Bosnia to the view the pyramids in uh, 2014 was my first uh, time. <clears throat> and then uh, last year for uh, going in the tunnels and we went to the top of the Sun Pyramid. And my wife was with me and uh, she's sensitive to energies and she could feel this energy. <clears throat> she used a pendulum. Uh, for measuring the amount of energy and we could see, you know, and it's like where you have these rocks inside the tunnels, the K2 and the, uh, some of the other large megalithic rocks that are inside would really give stronger readings with the uh, pendulum. Now, you did uh, an article back in 2014. <clears throat> right, in uh, Nexus magazine and also uh, posted on my website an uh, etheric.com and uh, you about the Bosnian pyramids and uh, uh, what how they happen to be covered become covered with quite a bit of uh, dirt and it's basically glacial outwash it's uh, from the ice sheets and uh, in, in the theory I've developed which I finally after 30 years have gotten it published in a refereed journal two years ago. It's called glacier waves. They uh, develop on the surface of the ice sheet during times when the, the sun is really baking the earth uh, due to a solar cataclysm. In other words, solar flare event, which, uh, which we read about these events in uh, mythology. But so far we've, have, we've had the Carrington event in modern times. Uh, but these would be much more severe, enough to cause severe melting of the glacial ice sheet, which uh, during the Ice Age was covering uh, uh, all of North America, Europe. <clears throat> and uh, this would have caused water to cascade down from lakes that would have formed, and they would have created an avalanche of water. And by the time it got to the bottom of the ice sheet, it would have created, it would have been a huge wave, uh, maybe half a kilometer high. and thousand kilometers long you can imagine uh, traveling several uh, 300 kilometers per hour forward and <clears throat> packing immense energy and this uh, would have taken any uh, dirt and just uh, covered everything uh, all of the Bosnian landscape looks like it's been covered with uh, sand and gravel and so the pyramids, uh, the, the Sun Pyramid, for example, has been dated uh, 34,000 about calendar years old. Actually, uh, it's been dating 29,200 plus minus 400, which is radiocarbon date. Right. But you did come up with a calibrated date. Yeah, well, it's um, a calibration that I use, which is uh, the Cariaco Basin radiocarbon uh, conversion scale, which I consider the best. It's from Venezuela, and a lot of other people use it. Um, and uh, so you have to add quite a few thousand years to make it an older date. And uh, so you see, uh, you can see if you study the record uh, that there were huge uh, events of flood events before and after the time of the pyramid was being uh, built and also high cosmic ray levels before and after. And so I believe that uh, one of the purposes was for, like for digging, digging the tunnels was to create a shelter both from the cosmic rays and the floodwaters. <clears throat> and uh, people could have lived in there very easily because it seems that oxygen is somehow generated in the tunnels and actually it's a healing environment. Uh, negative ions, very healthy. And uh, sort of been the ideal fallout shelter. These people were thinking way ahead of us. Uh, and, uh, so this, in fact, you see tunnels all over the world. Uh, like in Turkey, there goes down how many levels? 20 levels of tunnels or so in some places. Uh, so it's not understood today because we don't see these things happening. These things happen during the Ice Age and 
the only records we have are the legends and myths. And uh, modern archaeologists uh, don't believe these as real stories, but uh, they are in fact true stories. When you st really study the record and you see the evidence, the geological evidence supports this. You've been bo to Bosnia twice, 2014 and 2019. Mm. Right. So you were able to see the progress of the mm. Bosnian pyramid sites. Yeah. But also the foundation who's been running the project has been growing. Right. And it's a And you still see the same enthusiasm of the people helping out there, volunteers and You could see the volunteers yeah. and uh, which is really unique. Yeah. And the project's been run by the non-profit NGO. Right. Yeah. Which is also unique. How would you comment that? Well, yeah, it's uh, unique in that, uh, you know, other sites, they're usually getting money from archaeological institutes, so on, to do their work, whereas here, people are contributing the money and their time voluntarily. You sometimes, I think, see, see this in digs where students will volunteer their time and help out for not accepting any wage, so there's a learning experience. And so the same thing sort of going on there. Uh, and it's really one really big happy family that. there, from the way I understand it. Also, I found that uh, we did some measurements, as you remember, on my blood, white blood cell counts, which were quite expensive to do, the t study T cell counts. And um, we found that my T cell counts actually increased slightly, being in the tunnels. I gone in every day for uh, a couple hours a day for a week, and uh, seems to have a positive effect on the immune system. Well, wonderful. Thank you very much, and come again. Thank you, Sam.